What is going on guys? Welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about to do's uh, and why you should never be using them in your code base. Uh, so if you don't know what a to do is, you've never heard this term before, uh, in the context of programming, it is kind of like a comment that you put in your code when you feel that you need to come back and revisit this code and, and fix something up. Say for instance, you're writing a function, you're trying to accomplish some task. Uh, you say, I don't want to do it this way because it's going to take too much time. So I'm going to do it this other way that's slightly simpler. Um, you know, it's not ideal, but in order to get this out on time, I kind of need to take this shortcut. However, I'm going to write it to do so that I remember to come back later and fix it. And this is the trap that people fall into. Uh, but anyways, that's what a to do is. And in this video, we're going to be talking about three broad categories of to do's. Um, the first one is why they are a bad thing, in my opinion. Uh, the second is how you can prevent to do's from getting into your code base. And the third is how to handle to do's if you have them in your code base um, and how to kind of deal with them because you can't completely get away from them 100%. Unfortunately, there's always going to be circumstances where they are kind of useful. Um, but th this section will kind of cover techniques that you can use to mitigate the negative impacts of to do's. Uh, so first of all, uh, why are to do's bad? So, so let's think of a practical scenario. Now, I'm a, I'm a developer, I'm writing some code, I have some target to meet in terms of a deadline for my task, I need to finish it in one week. And I'm working on this task and I quickly realize as I'm writing the code, it's like, hey, if I wanna do this the right way, um, it's gonna take a lot more effort than I thought. Uh, it sucks, right? Um, but, but if I take this little shortcut, if I do this thing that I know, you know, is a bad, nasty thing that people are gonna kind of look at me and say, hmm, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, it, it'll get done on time. It may be a little bit faster. So this is a very easy trap to fall into uh, because you are basically mortgaging your, your future time for your current benefit. Right? You're saying, I'm going to get this out now, but I'm going to introduce technical debt into the system that someone is going to have to come back, maybe not even me, at a later point to fix. Uh, and what I think you'll find is that uh, in many large organizations, even smaller companies, uh, those that are very quick moving, those are that are constantly trying to drive value for customers by building new products, building new features, you have almost zero time, very, very little, if not zero time, to come back and refactor code. And it's not just refactoring code, it's, it's like fixing these to-dos. When I say refactoring code, I mean fixing to-dos because it's kind of the same thing. And what you'll find from a business perspective is that there is very little business value or tangible value that comes out of refactoring or fixing to-dos. And that kind of makes sense if you think about this, right? Like you're just fixing code, you're not, you're not building new features that customers can use, that the business can use to make money, right? So the business itself disincentivizes kind of fixing up your code and getting it to a good state. So that's the first reason why uh, introducing to-dos is a bad thing because you're just never gonna have time to go and fix this stuff because you're always gonna be building new things. There's always gonna be the next task to do. Why would anyone wanna come back and just revisit this trivial thing? So that's uh, reason number one. Second one, say you have some initiative. You're a lucky guy or girl and you have enough time to go and fix these to-dos. Now, if you have a lot of these to-dos in your code base, more often than not, you're probably not even the one that wrote them. Uh, so there's a lot of context that needs to be gathered uh, in order to understand why the to-do is in the first place, uh, how to fix it, whether or not the fix that you're thinking is even safe. There's all this kind of periphery context that needs to go into thinking about this to-do and all this kind of stuff that you need to have in the back of your mind when you're trying to resolve it. Um, and that's just extra time. If you would have just done it in the first place, you would have had the context to do it right and you would be confident that it's safe because you were the person that wrote the code originally. Uh, so you're just kind of, again, mortgaging your future self, right, for, for the current benefit. Uh, and the third is kind of related to the second, which is that when you do go back and fix these to-dos, it's not just writing the code and fixing it, right? There's a whole bunch of other steps. There's like QA, verifying that it's working correctly, whatever um, solution that you put in place to fix this to-do. There's uh, code reviews where you need other developers, other engineers to take a look at what you're doing, make sure it's safe. There's deployments, there's monitoring. All of this stuff could have been avoided if you just did it the first time. So in summary, for like why this is a bad idea in general, besides like the business justification thing, it's just a whole bunch of wasted time that goes into fixing to-dos and you're just better off not introducing them in the first place. You'll just be in a better spot by the end of it. 
Um, so that's why to do's are bad. So let's move on now to how you can prevent to do's. Uh, and there's two kind of subcategories of this. It's how you personally can prevent it and how you can introduce mechanisms to prevent your teammates from doing it as well. Uh, so how you can do personally, I mean, it sounds a lot easier than it is, but it's like, just don't write to do's, right? Just like do it right, right away. And I know I'm like simplifying this and trivializing the, the complexity of making decisions like this, but uh, as I've kind of described, like you spend an enormous amount of time later fixing these problems, if ever, and if you don't fix them, you just have technical debt, which is even worse in my opinion. So try not to, to write them yourself. And if that means pushing out your task deadline by a few days or a week rather, or whatever it may be, I feel personally that it's worth it to ensure that the integrity of the system that you're building does not get compromised for the sake of developing a feature faster, unless it's truly emergency, unless it's truly something that cannot wait, it is super, super business critical. But I think what you'll find is very few times that's actually true. Everything can always wait a couple days, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so the idea is just don't write them yourself, push the date out for the deadline if you can so that you can do it the right way. Uh, second, in terms of how to prevent your teammates from doing this, I mean, this is a cultural thing. This isn't anything one individual can do. This is something that your whole team needs to agree to. Uh, so you need to sit your team down, have a, a frank discussion saying, guys, like I saw AWS Simplified's video and I thought about it myself, like to-dos are a bad thing. I've been noticing them. Uh, we're putting them more and more in the code. We're never going back to fix them. Uh, so maybe we should stop doing this. Uh, so really this is down to the culture, it's down to your team. And if you see it in code reviews, if someone's using it to do, really challenge them on that. Ask them, why can't we do this right now? What's the point of this to do? I think you'll find that um, people try to slip to do's into their code because it's an easy cop of. It's an easy excuse to say, oh yeah, I'll come back and finish this later because I don't want to do it right now. Or if I were to do it, it would introduce so much complexity that's not worth thinking about for this code review. So I'll put it in a follow-up code review. Like I said before, you never have the time to do this stuff. So although people may have good intentions, introduce mechanisms, 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 mechanisms. These are the things that are gonna prevent you from getting these you know, code smells or uh, technical debt into your system. And the mechanism in this case is put it into your culture, make sure that if you see a to-do during a code review, you call it out and developers call other developers out. This can't just be a you kind of thing or a me kind of thing. It needs to be a culture-wide thing. Um, so the third part is um, how to handle to-dos because there are some exceptional cases in which they can provide some value. Um, like I kind of said, there's the, the emergency scenario where it's like, yeah, we, we just need to get this out. It's causing some critical poor user experience. Um, we're we're going to take on this, this sacrifice now. We're going to take on this technical debt, but it's going to be deliberate. And so um, I, I think... This is really the only situation where I would advocate using to do is if like you just really need to get something out the door quickly to resolve some emergent technical issue. But if you're going to do this, what I would suggest is that you you create a follow up task right after you submit that code review and you push that code and you you create a follow up task, you add it to your next sprint or your next week, whenever you can work on it, you prioritize it. And the key thing here is to add as much context to the description of that task as possible. Because as I mentioned before, context switching is a real problem. And it's likely that maybe you won't even be the one if you wrote the code, maybe you won't be the one that actually resolves the to-do or works on the task to fix it. So it is absolutely vital that if you are using to-dos in these kind of circumstances, that you provide enough information so that anyone can pick it up, have very, very little context and be like, yeah, I know exactly what to do for this task. Um, so that's the kind of the way that you can kind of deal with to do's. Um, unfortunately, a lot of organizations may already have a lot of to do's in their code base. There's really, unfortunately, no way around fixing this. You kind of just need to d dedicate time to, to scoping out what you have and just fixing them one by one. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. But the, the key here is just preventing them from getting in there in the first place. And I think that if you use the tips that I suggested, you'll have a, a much healthier code base, you'll have a great team culture, and you'll just prevent these things from getting there so you don't have to deal with all the negative parts of using to-dos uh, throughout your development career. 
So that's my tip for you today on how to avoid to do's and how to kind of deal with them if you, if you actually need to deal with them. Uh, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Uh, and if you like this content, please let me know. I'm trying out a whole bunch of different video styles and different topics and such. Uh, so I'm curious what you think of this stuff. Thanks so much, folks. I'll see you next time.